Today, I'm going to show you how to install Docker on your Windows 10 computer, because the last couple of times I tried to do that, it was quite a pain in the butt and cost me a few hours of my time. So my hope is that this video saves you at least some of that time. Let's get to it. It may be tempting to go ahead and search in Google for download Docker for Windows or something along those lines, and you definitely can do that, but I warn you that you're gonna run into errors when it's gonna start up the engine, and you'll have to do these steps anyways. So let's just begin with those. And the first one is to enable virtualization on your computer. And for that we need, or on most computers, we need access to BIOS or UEFI, depending on the age of your computer. And in order to complete this step, we need to restart our computer in one of these modes. So what I typically do, because I can never tell whether my computer recognizes F1, F2, F8 or F10 during the startup, it just keeps starting Windows every time. So we can just make Windows restart it in the mode that we want. So I type BIOS and you can click change advanced startup options here. You can also type UEFI and it, it will show you that it's related. And here we will see the advanced options screen. And the part that interests us is the advanced startup button. And I'm gonna click it now, but I'm gonna stop the recording of the screen first and switch to my camera because otherwise it will kill the screen recording. And now we are presented with this choose an option screen and hopefully you can see okay what I'm about to click. So here we want to click troubleshoot because it says we can either reset our PC or see advanced options and we do want to see advanced options. Don't click reset your PC uh, unless it's just slow and you want to do that. Just make sure you save your personal files before you do that. And now we click on advanced options and we are presented with more options and as I said the one we are mostly interested in is called UEFI firmware settings and we click on that and we'll have to do another restart because, well, because Windows computers. And this is the screen that you should be presented with. So here what we're looking for is the configuration tab or setup tab or something along those lines. So we navigate to that and you navigate to that through the arrow keys. And here we're looking for Intel Virtual Technology or Hyper-V or anything else that has the word virtual in it if you can't find these exact uh, phrases. So here you can see that it's already enabled for me, but if it's not enabled for you, you press enter, you choose enabled by either um, arrow up or arrow down keys. Uh, and then, as you can see here at the bottom of the screen, well, let's see if I can focus. Here at the bottom of the screen, we see that we can press function and F10 to save and exit. So we do that. It's gonna ask us if we want to exit saving changes and obviously we do, otherwise we won't have come here and we are doing another restart. Now we're back in Windows and our next step is to enable WSL2. And what the heck is this? Well, if you just Google it, WSL2, you will see that it's Windows subsystem for Linux. Basically, it's what will allow us to run Linux Docker containers on Windows. And so basically just type WSL2 in your uh, Google browser and go to the second link because we want to install it. So here we see we can either do a simplified install or a manual install. And you can only do simplified install if you have a preview release. Uh, you probably don't. Uh, if you do, you probably could figure it out all on your own. Uh, so we're gonna go through the manual install. So we just go to step one and we what we need to do is enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. Well, this enables the version one. So it's not gonna be as easy to complete all the steps, but we'll try to do our best here. What we need to do is open PowerShell as administrator. And to do that, we type PowerShell in the search bar on Windows, right click on it and click run, uh, run as administrator. And it will ask you if you indeed want to make, uh, to allow this app to make changes to your device. You say yes, and this is what's gonna show up. So basically we just copy this command, go to our PowerShell prompt, right click, it will automatically paste it. And here it added no restart at the end, uh, but restart will be required after step two or three. Uh, so we run this command, it may take a few seconds, uh, maybe a minute. And after that, we're gonna go to step two. And it finished installing, so let's go to step two. And step two is to check system requirements for running WSL2. And it tells us how to do that, it tells us which version we need to be running. So to, to check that, let's press Windows logo key and R together and type WinVer, which stands for Windows version, I assume. 
And here we see that uh, my version is 2004, uh, my build is 19041. And uh, so the difference between X64 and ARM64, as far as I know, ARM is basically used in mobile devices, Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. So if you have a real laptop, then you probably uh, have X64. And uh, so it looks like our version actually matches both of these, so we don't really care. And uh, so step two is done. We didn't have to restart our computer yet. But now, uh, in step three, we need to enable virtual machine feature. And it does say that it will require virtualization capabilities. And basically, this is what we were enabling in step one. So if you got here and you still didn't find anything about virtualization in your BIOS options, most likely you don't have it. If you're not sure, just Google your uh, laptop model or computer model and see if you do have that. So now here we need to open PowerShell as, as, as administrator and uh, actually it's still open. So we just copy this command again, just right click to paste it. We're pasting it, it, should take, uh, it, it shouldn't take long as you can see. And now it's done. And so at this point we do need to restart our computer. I tried not restarting it and I ran into a bunch of issues later. Uh, and basically I just have to do all, this, uh, all the steps all over again and just please restart the computer and come back to the video. We want to save you time and not waste more time. So just restart the computer right now and we'll go to step four after that. All right, hopefully you found my video back after the restart and now we are at step four and now we need to download the Linux kernel update package. Don't worry about what it means, it's just related to this Linux stuff that we need. And so we save it to downloads wait for it to download depending on your internet connection speed and then we just double click that and if you use a different browser you may have to go to a different place to find it but you could always just open your file explorer and go to downloads here and uh, it should be the top file the top downloaded file looks like it finished the update and now we need to open powershell again uh, and so just in case it doesn't really say to open it in the administrator mode, but we're gonna do that anyways, because we don't want to repeat the same operations multiple times. Uh, again, it's gonna ask you if you really want to allow this app to make changes, you say yes. Once again, you copy this command and you paste it. And uh, looks like we are at step six right now, and that's installing your Linux distribution of choice. So we click here on Microsoft Store, it's gonna prompt you, do you really trust this link? And we say yes. We say yes and wait for Microsoft Store to load. And it should bring us to this page, run Linux on Windows. And by default, unless you have any specific reason to use something else, just choose Ubuntu. It's like the most stable, the most supported. This information is not verified, but it's at least the most popular. How about that? And uh, it says I own this app. That means I've installed it before. You may have a different option like get which will link this app with your account, but you can figure it out. Just click blue buttons all the way <laughs> and uh, it says start a download. And once again, it may take a few minutes to possibly a few hours if you really have a slow internet from 1999, uh, but it really shouldn't be the case anymore, regardless of where you live. And it's downloading, 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 and it's almost done. It wasn't bad. Uh, I guess paying 80 bucks for the internet makes the internet faster. And uh, now it says the product is installed. We, let's see, do we need to launch it? Yes, uh, I think we do need to launch it because we need to set up the password. So actually, once you launch it, it still has to do some ins uh, installing processes. It has to finish something. And it says this may take a few minutes. Hopefully it doesn't air out. This is the step where it would air out for me before, where I wouldn't restart in step three because I thought since I had already done this I don't need to do that again because I was trying to prepare for this video to make sure I know what I'm talking about and and then when I ran through those steps again it, everything worked just fine so here you're prompted to enter new Unix username treat this as a separate operating system that just runs inside the Windows uh, but you don't need to use the same username as your Windows username just make sure you remember what it is uh, I'm gonna say Jekka and uh, I'm gonna give it the password. Well, I'm not gonna tell you what the password is and you may not, or actually you won't see like anything's happening when you type in your password. But believe me, something is happening. It just doesn't show you anything. So now we submit by pressing enter 
and we are in business. All right, so looks like all the steps have completed successfully thus far. And now we can finally install Docker desktop. So basically we can just Google install Docker on Windows. And so there are two links. So click on either one. Eventually it will lead you to the same place. So here we click download from Docker Hub and you may or may not have to create an account. Uh, looks like I'm not signed in, so you shouldn't have to create an account, but if you do just create an account, it's free. And so click on either of these buttons and save it to the downloads folder or wherever you keep your downloaded files. And once again, it shouldn't really take long if you have a high speed internet, if you're on dial up, come back next century. And it looks like we got about 40 seconds left, but basically there is like no magic to it right now after we run through the normal install process. Everything should just work because we've already done the prerequisites. If you had done this step first, whenever Docker desktop would be starting the Docker engine, you may have seen like an error that says virtualization is not enabled or stuff like that. That means you need to go to step one of this video and enable virtualization on your computer. And if that stuff didn't help you, just let me know in the comments and I can try to help you figure it out if I have time, which is not a guarantee these days. And otherwise, just try Googling your specific error and um, Googling how to enable virtualization on your computer. And it's done. So we double click it again. Not again, but double click this file. Again, it's gonna ask us if you allow this app to make changes, obviously, otherwise we won't have double clicked it. And now it's downloading whatever it needs. So we have already done everything for WSL2, but just in case, leave this option checked in case Docker needs to like do some special setup for it. And now we basically just wait. All right, so finally installation succeeded. So now we can test if we set everything up correctly. So here in the search bar, just type Docker, open Docker desktop and wait. There is a lot of waiting, restarting and waiting with installing Docker. Okay, so you don't see that right now, but in my right corner, uh, a notification appeared that Docker is starting and eventually this screen should show up and it should say Docker engine starting. So as long as Docker engine is able to start without throwing a bunch of errors about virtualization and stuff like that, then we're good. So let's just make sure it worked don't see a reason why it wouldn't, but you never know. All right, so looks like Docker engine is actually misleading us because if I click in my taskbar and see and hover over the whale, it says Docker desktop is running. So if it's been a few minutes and it still says it's starting, try closing it out and reopening it again and make sure that it is indeed running. So we don't care about the tip of the week. Uh, Okay, so here, if you hover over this whale here, it does say running. So that means that our Docker engine is running. As we can see here, no containers are running. This is not going to be in scope for this video, but feel free to experiment with this command and see if you can run a container. In the next video, we're going to see how we can run Python in Docker. So you don't have to install anything on your Windows machine and do Python development through a Docker container. This is it for today. Hopefully this was helpful. As I said again, if you ran into any errors that we didn't really, well, we didn't really see any errors because I was well prepared for this video. But if you do see some errors, please post them in the comments and we can see if we can figure them out. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.